Hello and welcome to coverage of Pro Tour Theros. My name is Marshall Sutcliffe. I'm in the booth with Brian David Marshall, and we are in draft. It's the second round of the second day of draft action here. In our feature match area, you get a look at the, the broad strokes of the feature match area as we zoom down into our video feature here. Yvonne hey. Floch on the left-hand side. Hey, look, it's a favorite hoplite. Oh, not again. <laughs> the last time we started a game off with the favorite hoplite, it went like 30 turns, so we'll uh, see what it's happens. It's a favorite hoplite that is uh, favored by, f got the uh, favor of Heliod there. Oh, okay, so so this is actually a, a much, much more aggressive start than we saw in our last one. Yeah. The favorite hoplite did a couple and then ended up being a great defensive creature here. So we have Adam Jansen chosen on the right-hand side. Yeah, chosen by Heliod. Um, he's made his Pro Tour debut, Adam did, in 1996 yeah, he's, BDM. Yeah, he's played about seven Pro Tours over, right. the, over the, you know, intervening two decades. <laughs> mm -hmm. He finished fifth in Detroit in 2013 for GPs. He's got a pretty good GP win rate, about 60%. And he's, he's a little bit more of a constructed player than a limited player, it looks he's like. He's a lot more of a constructed player than a limited player. I'm gonna, curious to see what he's got going on here. Uh, I like the start so far, I'll tell you that. Yeah, fl flesh made steed from uh, Ivan Flock again, uh, ranked twenty fifth. Yep, he's tied with Sam Black. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There we see. Yep. All right, here's a scry trigger for Adam Jansen. He's gonna push a card down to the bottom, but he's getting in for a bunch here. How much is this? Two, three, for five? Yeah. All right, so he's off to a really quick start. Putting a lot of pressure on Yvonne, and Yvonne's deck looks like it's red-black aggro. So this could get interesting here when the aggro deck is forced to flip rolls and yeah. play defense. Some of them do it okay, and some of them do it very poorly. Things go, you know, sometimes your creatures must attack or right. they all have, like, low toughness. Yeah. But sometimes you can actually put up a pretty big defense or even just bring the race to your opponent. And Yvonne says, all right, I'm going to hit you for two and then play a Blood Toll Harpy. So, geez. Yeah, both 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 players, uh, you know, obviously split red at the table. Mm -hmm. We see uh, one of the cards that may have pushed Jansen into red, which is, is Hammer of Porphyros. Oh, jeez, that is a kind of card that can just take over. Unfortunately for Adam, he does not have a second red source currently, but his hand looks pretty it's stacked nice. up, and I think he's going to be able to ride this favorite right. hoplite to, he's got the to nigh near victory. Favorite hoplite. Yeah. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see how aggressive he gets here. His opponent is tapped out and is not going to be blocking here. But he's right. got to be careful because he's got, like, a Titan strength, and he could yeah. just fire it off, and he's going to. This also lets him scry, though, yeah, he's to help him for, try he's to find that mountain. Yeah. yeah. He puts yeah. it back on top. It didn't get a look at what card it was. I'm going to guess it's a mountain I, he's I would, keeping it. I would think so, too, yeah. And a, another a, huge hit. any land because, I mean, he also has a hopeful idol on in mm -hmm. his hand. Oh, uh, okay. Is, yes going to be pretty would, big here. Yeah, it, w w which basically means the favorite hoplite would be the one-man wrecking crew that Yvonne Flock's cr uh, deck probably couldn't beat outside of something like a sip of hemlock. Right, and then you see the, the troubles with removal sometimes in this format. You see it uh, looks like a Freakus Cure and a Lightning Strike, yes. which um, combined right now would not kill the favorite hoplite. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, still has two with toughness the seven to spare. Toughness yeah. on the hoplite. That's right. So Yvonne Flock finds himself with a grip of really nice aggressive cards, but sitting at a lowly five life facing down a solitary favorite hoplite. And that hoplite is really threatening to start abyssing Yvonne right, Flock, meaning that he must chump every turn. He, he's or a five. He is. He can also, I mean, this is where it gets real sketchy, right? Because if for Yvonne, you start thinking about, well, if I double block and then I use my <laughs> removal spells, can I kill that thing? And, you know, Adam Jansen has, if he has any trick at all, then none of that stuff works. Let's see what Yvonne comes up with. But he's got to do something because he cannot, he can't, he just can't let uh, Adam keep that on the board and just keep attacking him turn after turn. He's going to have to start chump blocking. And uh, it's usually when the game turns in yeah, the wrong right, favor. Right, especially when you see a card like Mogus's Marauders in his hand, mm -hmm. which is a card that really, you know, wants as many of your creatures to live as possible. Absolutely. Again, I mean, the, the crazy thing is that Yvonne has a really nice hand for an aggressive yeah. deck. Yeah. He's yeah. even got he the look, uh, yeah, fanatic he, of Mogus to Yeah, you can see him going up. like Borderland Minotaur, next turn, play Mogus's Marauders, get in for a bunch of damage. 
He doesn't attack with anything, indicating that he is lining up a block, and this could get really nasty. He's, he's throwing a block party. <laughs> he is. Now, I don't. Yeah, so it looks like um, Adam Jansen doesn't. He, that was a mountain, by the way. Yeah. He does not have an instant speed trick, so he yeah. doesn't get to go for the full ridiculous <laughs> blowout. But he is going to force a chump block here, and he's going to gain a bunch of life as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is the most favorite yeah, hoplite. Flesh, Fleshman Steed's like, yeah, you know what? I. Yeah, we're good here. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna block while the blocking's not the worst. Yeah, or at least why it's possible. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Now, that favorite hoplite we had in our last feature match with Rob Doherty was also a beefed up one, but this guy has done serious work. Adam Jansen has found a way to trigger that favorite hoplite every, every turn. Every turn. Yeah. <laughs> Came down on turn one, did something on turn Cho two. Chosen of Helion. Yeah, turn, turn three. Uh, he did the... Uh, Titan Strength. No, he did the white pump spell. Oh, he did the white pump spell, right? Yeah, and then, then he did the Titan, Titan strength. strength, and then turn five, he put uh, the hopeful idol on on top of it. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a 5-6 base, plus two, so it's a 5-8, mm -hmm. and now it's a 6-9 yes. lifelinker. <laughs> Is this a land here for Adam Jansen? Because Adam also has an observant, uh, I'll say it in his hand as well, See what's happening. No, not a land. Let's take a look at what he's holding. Right, we're looking at uh... hammer. We know that one. Observant. I'll say it. Yeah, we saw that. And then a, oh, a portent of betrayal. Uh, he's just going to start combat off though, because right now Yvonne has no blocks that that make any sense. Right. And uh, he can just freely jam it in there. He can also represent any number of tricks that make. I mean, this is such a nightmare scenario for Ivan Flock. I mean, he might be forced to just go for it here. He can put six damage on the hoplite, and then he can add another five to it potentially to right. uh, to kill it and and knock it down to just the the eidolon. But if Adam Jansen has any instant speed tricks, right, then that it doesn't like, work. That looks like what's happening. Yeah, but I don't really think he has a choice. What is he going to yeah. win this game? Otherwise, no. Let me, so, let me ask you a question. Sure. Would you have considered? Important of betraying your favorite hoplite there. Yeah. For combat. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> or maybe just the Minotaur. I mean, because right now th this is interesting because Adam Jansen just says, "Sure, he's left up God's willing mana, but he doesn't actually have it." Yeah. Fox at five. So, what we have here? No, that's still not enough, is it? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that is. It's exactly enough. So Flock gets three for one. <laughs> Basically. Wow. And Flock finishes wow. off the board. Now, you got to like Adam Jansen's stance here w with the Hammer of Perforos, but Flock has to have a huge sigh of relief there after facing down this massive. And, and now he gets to start deploy deploying his hand. Well, the Lightning Strike and the Freakers Cure are gone. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to get really interesting because Adam Jansen is going to have an endless stream of threats as long as he draws lands, but he's had a hard time drawing them, is only sitting at four currently. So, so you know, just worth, I mean, if he had, if he had Port of Betrayal there, then he would not have been able to also do any damage, right? The, the, all the damage done to, about, to the favorite hoplite would have been prevented this turn. So there would have been no way to block and... Uh, yeah, he would have had to just chump. Yeah, and yeah. it would have been a 10 toughness. Yes, he just would have... Th there would have just been no combination uh, from that point. So, but you know, I, I, he also could have port in a betrayal just to steal the Minotaur and attack with both, and then it's going to be almost impossible to get up to nine. Like, he would have to have two... That's three, six... He still, even with two lightning strikes, wouldn't have been But, but again, ha Hammer of Porphyros just yeah. is, is going to make this... Uh, tra 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 uh, traveling Philosopher... And, and a uh, and a tapper, a soldier, short cutter. <laughs> and I think we're going to see the yeah, portent here. Port, yeah. Steal your guy, and that's going to do it. So Adam Jansen, he he ended up losing his his super creature, but right. he was still a able to find right. a win. Right. It's like it's like when you're trying to open a jar of pickles, <laughs> and someone's like, oh, oh, and then you take it and you open it. He's like, I loosened it up for you. <laughs> Show, show the world you watch the Pro Tour coverage with the Theros Tourist Achievement. Just log on to planeswalkerpoints.com and enter the redemption code IWATCHEDTHEROS to earn your reward. I see these players. Uh, 
I was interesting. I, I, I really appreciate uh, the career of someone like uh, Adam Jansen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we have people who who find a, a place for magic in their lives. You know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not a not a, a, a professional magic player mm-hmm. per se, but you know, someone who's you know qualifies for pro tours from time to time. Is mm-hmm. you know certainly you know I'm sure I am sure at his local PTQs he must be like, the oh, beast. No, come on, match up been, against this Adam guy's Jansen. been beating me in the last round of the Swiss so many times. Yeah, I bet. You know. Because it is pretty tough to get on the pro tour these days. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's some, there's some big PTQs that go down around the country. Yeah, there were a couple, there were a couple like 400 person. Yeah. PTQs on the in East Toronto. Coast. Yeah, there was one in Toronto, one in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah well, we the Connecticut one was in the 200s. A reasonable. There was a 395 a over there somewhere. That was in yeah. Toronto. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and they also had a 300 and something one. Yeah, and we we get a few that. like that at home too, and and yeah, it's tough. I mean, you. You know, you gotta you gotta bring the goods, and you know. So anybody that you see on the stage here has done something worthy of accomplishment to really make it here. Yvonne Flock is a professional magic player. Yeah, he's uh, one of the better players out there. Kind of a quiet guy. You yeah. know, we don't we don't hear a lot you, from him. He he does not make. Uh, yeah, a lot a lot of magic players are good at announcing their presence with authority. They certainly are. <laughs> Certainly, uh, players who who play at the top level, and, and, but he, he he's, he's a little more reserved. He's very reserved, very yeah. quiet. You you um, easy to take him for granted, actually. I think so too. I mean, you're looking but, at somebody who's on the top 25 ranked right. players list in the world. He's tied for 25th with Sam Black. Yeah, I bet you you know that name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, this is not. When you see Yvonne Flock across from you at the table, you are not happy about it. Yeah, and I, I've been trying to keep his streak alive. He is. He has rattled off six straight wins yes. after going 0-3 in his opening draft. That's right. Yeah, you know, you're like, first pro tour of the season. Yeah. Anything's possible. Rubbing your hands together. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> this is going to be the year. I, it all comes together. Oh, no, this draft was a disaster. And, and, and just 0-3. Oh, you know, he's like, oh, I could have actually just slept in, showed up for Constructed, and had the same exact result. <laughs> With slightly more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's got to be brutal. But it is, I actually think it's a testament to the, uh, to the split format that we have here. There is, you know, if you go out on the floor and talk to the players, you know, maybe they had a rough draft, they won tooted or something. There you, there you get a look at those players. Yeah, there they are right there. This is our, our tournament area here. You know, you, there's, a, there's a real break there between, well, I had one two in the draft and I'm pretty unhappy about it, but now I'm going to construct it and I feel good about this deck and that whole kind of thing. So, you know, that's the, that's, I, I think that that's a, a really a big upside to having these uh, split format pro tours is that there's a reset button that you feel. Even though you're still just playing Magic the whole time, you can kind of leave that particular draft behind you and move on. Although you often see, you know, Twitter posts and stuff from people saying like, oh, I wish I could play with that draft deck all day, yeah, but uh, I know that we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling for sure. Yeah. It was funny. I saw Adam Jansen uh, ask the judge something and then uh, look off camera to like the, where the rope and stanchion is and shake his head. And I have a feeling it was one of his friends was like, hey, can I come in there and watch? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do have some uh, some spectators here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're not allowed in the uh, in the video feature match area. Of course, this is a all, all four matches uh, special going away. Yeah. Well, give us a just refresh us on on who we're seeing at these tables. Oh, oh yeah, sure. We've got uh, Brad Nelson versus John Larkin. John Larkin, Irish player, has experienced I, a lot most, of success. Most, most successful Irish Magic player of all time. He's got three pro tour top eights. Mm. You know, all coming more than uh, a decade ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we had him on camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like a, a fun guy. Did I, a deck I liked tech. Him. Yeah. You know, he had a, hit a little bit of a stumble at the start of Constructed. He went 3 0 in, in Limited. Yeah. We lost his first two rounds of mm-hmm. Constructed, but then right the ship. Oh, and he did. won his next three, and then he won again. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but he also I, had a, uh, a fan following. He had probably 10 of his buddies uh, oh, yeah. on the rail watching him play. You know, he's a, a definitely a popular player here. Uh, in Dublin. Um, our other feature matches, Alexander Hain versus Andrew Cuneo, Gainsay himself. And on our last one, Samuel Black, who's actually tied for 25th with Ivan Flock, who you're looking at right there, versus Mahara Maka, uh, Makahita Mahara from Japan, who's, uh, yeah, I mean, sitting, yeah, on, sitting on 24 four, match four, points. Four yeah. top eights in his yes. career. Uh, it looks like Andrew Cuneo just went up one game to zero on Alexander Hain. All right. And those guys are sideboarding for game two. You can see While them. the other matches, it sounds like they're still just in game one. It sounds like we've got a, a couple of more 
deliberate uh, matches than we've seen in the past rounds of this limited format. Yeah, yesterday our matches ended so quickly, I was surprised. Looks like Mahara's up a game over Sam Black, okay. one game to zero. We saw Sam Black's deck in the last round. Excellent deck, really cool to watch. And uh, here's yeah. Adam Jansen, and there it is. A favorite, how many of those does he Do you he think have? that uh, Ivan Flock just extends the hand here and move on to the next round? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, well, I mean, maybe he, not this time. I mean, time. if he's got a removal spell, this is his window. That's right. All right, so Adam Jansen, make sure to play that mountain. You want to have Titan Strength mana available in case Yvonne Flock goes for a lightning strike here foolishly, which he does not do. So just give you an idea. Traveling uh, Philosopher for one, Adam. Just the one favorite hoplite in, in Adam's deck. He's got a... He's playing 16 lanes. He's playing a very aggressive deck. Mm -hmm. um, interesting, playing only two of three hopeful Eidolons. What? Don't look at me like that. You frighten me. That that like hurts my feelings in some way. I, if but I, I guess have if one, you're gonna play 16 lands. Yeah, sure. I don't play 16 lands very I know, often I either. Know you don't. Yeah. Uh, we've we've heard uh, Paul Rietzel say that this is an 18. Yeah. Or 19. Oh, oh really? Land wow. And he's like sometimes you get an aggressive deck and you're only playing 18 lands. <clears throat> okay, interesting. That's really interesting because I've been playing 18 pretty consistently, 17 to 18. Ha Hammer of Porphyro, 16 lands is pretty. Uh, pretty <laughs> <That's aggressive>. Ambitious. <laughs> pretty aggressive. <laughs> pretty aggr Speaking of pretty aggressive, Adam Jansen is off to a nice start here, though. Felhide Minotaur is uh, threatening to to put the halt to the proceedings here. Tormented hero for uh, yeah. for Ivan Flock comes into play tapped. It's a 2-1, though, so it can block later. Right. Trade off for that traveling philosopher. Or Galeen and Snarecaster, mm -hmm. who's a cat and not a human. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, so uh, four land drops, though, in a row for Jansen, so no issues yeah, with his 16 lander here. And uh, what is he What is he firing off here? Is he going to fire off the hammer? Uh, drop the hammer. Dropping but, the hammer, yeah. Yeah, but he has no attacks, so, you know, Felhide Minotaur certainly doing his job, and Yvonne Flock now pausing. This, if, if you're in Adam Jansen's seat, you should assume he has Lightning Strike, and he does, or, or Magma Jet. Right. And he does kill the Hoplite. He took a risk there. There's a couple of cards that, that Adam can have to protect it, but he said, look, I'm just going to go for it now and get that if thing have, off the table. If you have God's willing, God bless. God bless. <laughs> you know, I think that's a reasonable read as well, because Adam showed that he was very aggressive with the Hoplite. I mean, right. he would burn right, right. combat tricks just to get in for damage, you know, and get the counter going. Let's take a look at what uh, Flock has to work with here. And uh, yeah, he's going to be able to set up a, a lot better this game. Uh, he's got that, that Krogma Warcaller. He's got uh, an Erebos' Emissary, mm. a Borderland Minotaur. Mm, did really? he just play? Did he just play the Magus' Marauders here, though? He did. Uh, he pointed to his 2-1, the Tormented Hero, right. and the other guy. He can get well. Yeah. He could do it to all of them. He can get in with everybody. He's only got uh, the three mana, so he just wants to make uh, use of it. All right, but it looks like he's sensitive to his defensive position right yeah, well, now. Well, very, very well played. Yes, and uh, keeps keeps his guys back. All right, let's see what Adam Jansen has now. He draws a land for the turn, and frankly, <laughs> AKA a three-three. Yeah, he just takes as many of these as he can. I mean, because at this point, he doesn't actually need to cast spells if he doesn't want. If he, as long as he draws a land, he can just say, "You yeah, look, I'm going to make a hasty three-three every single turn uh, that I draw a land for the rest of this game, and beat you down with them." You know, he can also he's going to develop his board though with a two-headed Cerberus. There we take a look at the hammer of Perforos. So all of his creatures have haste. They do, and he's going to attack with all of them. He's representing multiple combat tricks or removal, and yeah. he actually does have we one. We know that he drew, drew a battle-wise valor. That's right. Plus two, plus two until in a turn for a creature, and he also can uh, scry one. Yvonne, he has his pen in his hand, but he's not doing the I'm going to write down my life total thing. He's doing the let me look at my life total and see how how, how this ends up. Let for me, me spin my pen and buy some time to think. Yeah. All right. Blocks are happening. You got to feel for for Yvonne Flock here. He's, <laughs> he's just been in a position where he hasn't really been able to play around much. It worked out for him in game one when he was able to kill that hoplite right. somehow, but still wasn't enough right. to and, take and, the game. And, and Ivan, I, I mean, if he's thinking about the top eight, mm -hmm. he's got to win every match. Yes, he I, does. You know. 
All right, but he does it. He's going to block. He says, I'll trade these these two creatures. I'll, I'll eat your snare caster. I'll trade off for your traveling philosopher. But it is not to be. Battlewise Valor into the tapped out Yvonne Flock. He's missed a land drop this game as well. Means that uh, Adam Adam Jansen's creature is going to win combat, though. And he also ships a card to the bottom, which yeah. is well, it's better than when your opponent puts it back on top. So, sounds like Samuel Black has tied up his match with Makita Mahara. Ooh, that could be a good one. Apiece. That could be a good one there. I'm told that Mahara's deck is something I really want to see. Sounds like he's got uh, multiple uh, Grey Merchants of Asphodel that get repeatedly go to hell and get rescued. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hades, BDM. <laughs> uh, also that has, has that your... phrase rolls off a New Yorker's tongue <laughs> all too easily. <laughs> All right, so what does Yvonne Flock have? Well, he's got his, uh, <clears throat> his Erebos' emissary here. But yeah. again, that hammer is just sitting there threatening to start producing uh, three threes with haste every turn whenever Adam decides he wants to turn that corner. He's been developing his board here. He's keeping the pressure on using combat tricks. But when he runs out of gas, he can just be like, oh, a hammer. I'll turn all these useless lands yeah. into uh, threats over and over and over again. Looks like he has a Titan Strength in his hand. A lot of combat tricks. I do like how committed Adam was to the strategy. You know, the heroic deck, he has so many combat tricks. All right, I think we're going to see our first hammer activation here. It is. He's going to sacrifice this mountain. Get a 3-3 golem. Token looks pretty sweet, too. Yeah. And, of course, the hammer gives all your creatures haste, so that golem counts. This is where you start really going, oh, wait, that's what that card does? And he's actually just going to attack with these two, not, not going to send in the snare caster. Yvonne Flock still at 14. He has a manageable life total here, so it's not like... It's not like Yvonne's going to die this turn. He puts the emissary in front of the golem, and... This is an interesting choice here for Adam he's Jansen. Got some, yeah, he's got some creatures to discard. He's going to discard the Kragma Warcaller here. And as Adam Jansen want to actually make this into a fight here, he would be trading. He would be trading his uh, Titan Strength for the Erebos' Emissary. He can also Titan Strength his two-headed Cerberus and get in for a huge hit, but he doesn't want to do that. This doesn't save the, the Golem, though, right? Yeah, it's fine. There's more where that came from. <laughs> He does scry off of it, but honestly, does it matter at this point? Oh, and look at this. Yvonne Flock says, no, I want to keep this emissary. I'm going to pitch another card. He's using the cards in his hand as a resource without yeah. having to spend mana well, because creature, he's stuck on mana. combat tricks. That's right. For free. Yeah. Herbos' emissary is good. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he has double Farika's Cure in hand. He's trying to decide if he's, let's see, so what does he have that, that, that he can hit with it now? He can hit the two-headed Cerberus, one white mana, one card in hand for Adam Jansen. But again, I think Yvonne's past the point of playing around God's willing. So he's got the Cerberus, and he's also got the Snare Caster. But in reality, neither of them can really attack at the moment, and he's actually just going to take out the, Cerber or the Snare Caster here. What do you think about that, BDM? Yeah, he gets, lets him, you know, get go on the aggressive he goes 14 mm -hmm. he gets adam jansen down to 11. Mm. i wonder if adam jansen would have traded there anyway yeah but Yvonne flock decided it wasn't worth it uh, i to mean give we know adam that adam, adam's gonna be able to hopeful idle on his double striking cerberus and that's just obscene now you know he gets in for four <laughs> gains four and the race Swings firmly back in Adam Jansen's favor with that play. Right, gets the Anna, an attacking mountain. Yeah, I mean, this was a tough spot. Yvonne Flock decided to be the aggressor. He could have passed a turn and kept up the mana, and he potentially could have got a blowout there, but he didn't do it. Yeah, it's a tough decision because that opened up a, a for sure attack this turn, and Yvonne said, look, the way I'm going to win this game is by racing at this point. And uh, unfortunately for him, now the life gain is going to offset that. Yeah, Brad, Brad Nelson, by the way, and John Larkin. It looks like John Larkin just won game one. And, okay. uh, you know, I'm told settle in for a long, drawn-out conflict here. Is that right? Yeah. It seems like quite the battle. Shields up. So. 
a mountain drawn. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ad Adam Jansen's playing draw golem at this point. <laughs> I've heard of that. And uh, add a snare caster. And a snare caster to prevent yeah. any blocks, and in they go. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One short of actually killing Yvonne Fluck. And he has to kill the snare caster, which I think Adam's perfectly Just happy with. Just pure misery here for Yvonne Fluck. He is doing everything he can to fight, but Adam Jansen has had the upper hand at every point right. during this match. And his golem lived, and he's going to be able to make another golem next turn. He is. And a golem the turn after that, and that'll be, you know, just on, on the board. Yes. That's just on the board. Like, that's draw step independent. Yeah. Yuck. Elon Flock taking a look here. And any creatures he draws just go sideways. Yes. And Elon Flock has drawn probably the most awkward possible draw here. Oh, uh, what is that? It's the 2-3 uh, the that must attack. What is it called, BDM? <laughs> oh. I, I can't remember its name off the top of my hand here, off the top of my head here, but the exp the expendable Minotaur, I think his name <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, it's got regeneration, which makes it seem like it might be sweet here, but <laughs> fortunately, that's only going to be a turn. It's going to have to start battling. It's the uh, Death Bellow Raider. Death Bellow Raider, thank you. Not to be confused two, three with the for Skull two. Cleaver. You know. Yes, over its power and toughness are way what, above what, where what, its mana cost. One of the, one of those creatures that is a, you know very aggressive two drop creature. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Makihito Mahara has taken down Sam Black, putting the first uh, mark on Sam Black's uh, right. ledger uh, in the loss column. That's right. So Makihito Mahara and Sam Black are at X and 1. All right, so Ivan does have to play this thing, though. Yeah. He's certainly taking his well, time Well, you know, here. He'll, he'll put the, he can put the Death Bell Raider and something in front of... He also can save it to, to use it as the combat trick that we were talking about before. You could trade it off for one of the golems. And I so he just decided to pass the turn back. That makes sense. I think if he could say, you know, discard this thing and <laughs> kill a golem, he'd probably do it. Oh. What was that? That looked an awful lot. Like uh, Dauntless Onslaught. Okay, well, oh, we won't find matter. out if that's what it was this turn because it's Golem o'clock, everybody in the red <laughs> zone here. And even Fluck is just in a brutal spot. Got another another tied up match. Alexander Hain and Andrew Cunio, one game apiece. Well, actually, that's our only tied up match. <laughs> All right, so he did it. This is This is a... This is a start. The Hammer of Perforos has sacked a mountain. <coughs> so he's only he's down to one mountain. And he manages to get rid of yeah, the two-headed Cerberus, but it was too late. That Hammer of Perforos. So we've seen the Whip of Erebos and the Hammer of Perforos <laughs> do some serious work yeah, here in just Limited. Just if you're wondering why you want to first pick those cards yeah. when you open your pack. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to get a word with uh, with Adam Jansen down in the feature match in a second here. And then, but, and uh, then we have two pretty sick feature matches to still go to. We have uh, Andrew Cuneo versus uh, Pro Tour Averson Restored Champion Alexander Hain. We can mm -hmm. check in. And we have John John Larkin and Brad Nelson, which is where I think we're going to go. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like a thing. Hey, welcome hey, back everybody. to the booth, guys. Yep, Marshall Cycliff here with Brian David Marshall. And, uh, yeah, so we saw the whip. We saw the hammer. I've seen the bow do... Yeah, people, disgusting people actually gro maybe groan most playing against the bow. Yeah, the bow's a Because you know what it is? Like, spear passer. comes down, and you're like, oh, crud, I am going to be dead in two turns. <laughs> oh, the hammer comes down to me. But the bow comes down, and you're like, I am going to die slowly I'm gonna from die a sucking chest wound. Turns, I'm going to get yeah. an arrow <laughs> right through here, and I'm just going to be breathing <laughs> in and out blood, but I'm not going to be dead for, like, at least eight or nine turns. This is If you put on BDM glasses, this is how he views the world. Like, when he's playing <laughs> magic, this is what he sees. <laughs> yeah, but great stuff down in the feature match area. I, I've been enjoying this limited format a heck of a lot. We've seen... A ton of different archetypes represented. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We and saw, to we me, saw that's Sam a hallmark Black's of a good format. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, apparently, Meet Mahara has just a, a disgusting uh, 
you know, Gray Merchant of Asphodel, oh, Rescue from the Underworld deck. That like, card's Multiple nasty. Rescue from the Underworld. Mm -hmm. Three Gray Merchants of Asphodel. Oh, and your favorite black card. Which is? A Barn Overlord. Oh. I, I think that might be my favorite card in the whole set. Like, <laughs> at least the one that I want to open up the most. Yeah, I think that that card's just uh, unbelievable on power level. But uh, was he, is he mono black or was he mono black? Do we know? Uh, Mahara? Uh, I, it sounded like he was mono black, yeah. Must be nice. That's a tough one. I was actually wondering if people were going to be able to get that coming in. Hey, it sounds like we're going to get a chance. Tim Willoughby is set up to interview Adam Jansen. Mm -hmm. They'll talk about I mean, this is a player who's been playing on the Pro Tour sporadically for going on 17 years. Yeah. Started playing in 1996. Let's find out more about Adam Jansen, who just defeated Ivan Flock. And I'm here with Adam Jansen on the floor here at Pro Tour Theros. Congratulations, Adam. You've just beaten Ivan Flock in the feature match area. But you've been on the Pro Tour a while, right? Uh, yes, this is actually uh, my ninth Pro Tour. It's my first one in 15 years, though. I took a bit of a break from the game for a while. Well, wow, that's a really long break. So pretty much one of the first Pro Tours when you first played. And like, how does it compare, this one? Uh, it's definitely a lot different. There's a, a lot more rounds, um, a lot more competitors. Uh, I think overall um, the the power creep on the cards has kind of changed the game as well, and competitors as a general rule I think are all very good. Uh, so which was your first Pro Tour? Uh, my first Pro Tour was Pro Tour Columbus. It was uh, Pro Tour 3. Wow. So that was the second constructed one, right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. It was Ice Age Alliance's block constructed. Wowza. Now, you have a few new people on cheering for you on your team this time round. Uh, I understand that you have some special tokens that you brought to this pro tour? Um, yes, I have some soldier tokens that were made for me by my son. Uh, when a new set comes out, we'll go through and we'll write down lists of all the different tokens that are made and power toughness and creature types and such, and then he'll go and make them. Awesome. Now, we didn't get a chance to see the Golem tokens in the feature match, but you got a couple of the soldier tokens with you now. Can we get a few of them up and see if we can get them on camera? Look at that. So, you're playing the red-white heroic deck. Is there a chance that we might be able to get a few of those tokens in play next, next round? Well, that's what I'm hoping for. I was really hoping to lead with an early Acheron Crusader this game, so I could get them into play. It just didn't work out like that. Oh, well, best of luck next round for that. And in the rest of the Pro Tour, doing fantastically well after a fairly sizey break. We're going to head back to the booth now. Hey, guys, uh, that, welcome back. That's great that's stuff. That's great, great. And, you know, we talked yesterday about Rob Darty as a, as a gamer dad. Uh, you know, hold, Adam Jansen. Mm -hmm. we, had another, we got another gamer dad. Uh, speaking of players who've been playing for a while, we're going to see John Larkin. John Larkin, who has three Pro Tour top eights all more than 10 years ago. Got some old schoolers down there. Playing against Brad Nelson, who just a couple years ago was the player of the year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we're just about ready to throw it down to the floor and see those guys in action. They're going into game two. All right, let's do so. it. All right, back down in the feature match area. Brad Nelson on the left there. Irish player on the right-hand side, John, John, John Larkin. Larkin. We're, we're what is he Yankee. doing? We're in a Yankee, we're in a Yankee shirt. shirt. <laughs> I'm from Seattle. I, we have no love for the Yankees. I am from New York, and I have no love for the Yankees. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll forgive John Larkin this 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 once. <laughs> <laughs> Lean and Spellcaster comes down, taps, doesn't tap anything. Nothing to tap. Uh, John Larkin is up one game here. And uh, let's take a look at what these guys are playing. All right, there's a Viper's Kiss from Brad Nelson to neutralize that threat, send it to the graveyard. I, I think you might like the deck that Brad Nelson's playing. Then you get a, we'll, we'll come back to that. Just take a look real quick. Three, three or four. It's four. It's four. Oh, and, and uh, the return centaur actually mm. targets John Larkin. That's interesting. I've, I've, I've seen it mostly target its, yeah. Uh, yeah, its controller. So Brad Nelson playing blue-black. I do love blue-black in this format. Wow, there's 100-handed one, though, for John Larkin. Really, really powerful rare. 3-5 with Vigilance for only three mana with a really cool monstrosity ability. We'll get that one up on the screen for you guys in a minute here, but really cool card. Uh, in Theros here. 
How do you feel about the Divine Verdict as a, as a card in this limited I, I feel that it's underrated currently. Okay, well, so does uh, John Larkin. He's playing three of them mm. in his red-white deck. Yeah, I, I think it's good. I, I just think that, like, there's so few cards that just say kill a creature. See, Rage of Porphyros, but by the way, just killing a creature is going to take down the, yep. prescient, the prescient Chimera. Yeah, so we've got oh. prescient, prescient, and prescient. <laughs> all, 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 we'll let you choose All defensible pronunciations. All defensible, yep. And, uh, you see him uh, scry and see a lightning strike on top of his deck. He's like, oh, that, that's quite nice. Thank I, you. I do like a lightning strike. And uh, he's about to monstrous his... Uh, Hundred-handed one. Mm -hmm. And let's take a let's take a look. See at old hundred-handed one there. Look at that card. It has one of the coolest lines of text just ever put on a Magic card <laughs> in the history of the game, which is a lot. But anytime a card says can block an additional ninety-nine creatures each combat, I'm on board. Also, if you just even taking the the flavor aspect out, the card is just super super cool. There's a an, another. All right, so there's a Shipwreck Singer here for Brad Nelson, which has been activated to force the Laganaban Elder to attack. And I think that's going to set up a block there from the 2-4, which it does. He has four of those Shipwreck Singers. What? Four. Brad Nelson has four of those? Yeah. I mean, they're not like... Th that is unbelievable. I've never seen a deck with more than two, and yeah. I've seen a, a deck with two of them on the battlefield, and it was obscene. <laughs> Okay, let's see what, uh, yeah, so here's the Divine Verdict we talked about. I mean, he can't be excited to have to use it here, but he did have to use it here. Yeah. And looking at Brad Nelson's board, I mean, he only has that Shipwreck Singer left, and he's facing down two pretty huge creatures here, a 3-2, uh, maybe that's not huge, but 3-2 and also a 3-5 that threatens to get quite a bit bigger than that. Yeah, Shipwreck Singer is going to attack this turn. And I think we're going to see a Grey Merchant just... Uh, a stabilizing. Gain, gain, yeah, gain three life. This is what I pictured Gray Merchant would do when I first read the card. It's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you're okay with it. It wasn't the one where you get drained for eight that I thought of, but that happens a lot more often than I considered. Lightning Strike takes down the Shipwreck Singer. Which feels, you know, despite not having any specific mythological connotations, feels right to me flavor wise. Agree. It's also just a really cool magic card. Yeah. All right, and there it is. A monstrosity is activated. You see, the it world, gets three right. plus, plus, plus is counters. Absolute greatest ping pong player. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, six eight with vigilance now. That, as we mentioned before, it can block an additional ninety nine creatures for all intents and purposes. And limited, it can just block as many creatures as it wants. But it that's could, really good when you're talking about that many. 99 additional creatures, but a Storm Breath Dragon ain't one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is very true. Protection from White does do that. Uh, lucky for also John, flying. he's not going to be facing it. Here's a Benthic Giant, though. And divine Verdict this. Yeah, it's just uh, it's so rough for Brad because, you know, the temptation here is going to be to, to line up a triple block down the line here. Let's see, he's got three, four, five, six, seven right now. Doesn't have quite enough toughness to, to pull it off at the moment. So he's gonna have to take another hit potentially here from John, though it could get ugly. This is gonna be a big decision point for Brad Nelson because if John attacks, <coughs> uh, it could bring Brad Nelson down to one and with any burn or combat trick, then John could kill him. If such, Brad as, starts, such as the gods willing in hand? Yeah. Uh, Oh, he blocks with everything, though. Did I miscount? Four, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. Right, okay, I did miscount. So it was eight, it is enough to kill it. So any combat trick, anything that John has here can really destroy Brad Nelson, but he doesn't have a choice. He needs to make this move because he can't start chump blocking and he can't realistically take the damage either. And there it is, God's willing, give my creature protection from black or blue, you can choose probably choose black and then uh, push a card push a card too just gotta love yeah, that kill, kill that benthic giant yeah kill a hexproof card creature that always feels good yeah with your white one drop and here's read the bones it's a, it's a desperate act here but he's got to do it and he does still have a little bit of play here he's going to drop down to five but he has a chump block and that lagana band elder still doesn't have any attacks of course any additional action from john larkin's side of the table is going to be really tough for brad he's taking a look at the cards from his read the bones and he decides just to draw both 
Well, it looks like one of those cards was a Voyager's End. That's correct. And the other, I believe, is a Viper's right. Kiss. Is that what that is? Right, media? so maybe he's going to get the 100 handed one and Viper's Kiss it. Yes, that is the plan because John does not have nearly enough mana to play it and to monstrous it. So Brad Nelson ah, looking to stabilize here. He gets here. to swing with the Gray Merchant. He does. I like this. This is, this is a big turn here for Brad Nelson. He may have found just the exact two cards he needed to keep 100 handed one from being. Like I mentioned earlier, an abyss, a creature that attacks and makes you chump block turn after turn. Wow. Great stuff here. So, 100 handed one comes down, and so does a burnished heart. Mm hmm. That's burnished heart's going to keep the other, the any attacking at bay, but here we go. Viper's Kiss on your 100-handed one. So Viper's Kiss, minus, yeah, go ahead. Minus one, minus one, mm -hmm. but it's also going to mean you can't activate the abilities on the 100-handed one, which includes... Monstrosity. Yeah. Small bonus additional to that. Increases his devotion count for black, so any future gray I, merchants get a little bit better. I, I don't believe he has any future gray merchants. Ah, uh, that was the one? Yeah. Well, that's kind of sad. Get a look at the Viper's Kiss. Well, his Aborn Overlord gets a little better, doesn't he? Does he have an Overlord? He does. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that Not in his hand, <laughs> but <laughs> it is in his deck. <laughs> okay, so he's going to play the... Uh, the Skull Cleaver and Bash here with the whole team. And Brad should be able to survive this turn because it's only, yeah, it's four damage that he's going to be taking, assuming that John has nothing else. Trade that, I go to one, and Brad Nelson must come up with something that affects the board, and he can't find it here. Passes the turn back. John Larkin does have to move in and attack with both. He likely will do so, though. Yep. There he goes, and he's been that's it. Long enough, he knows he's just going to attack. He knows he's going to do it. John Larkin defeats Brad Nelson. John Larkin wins. <laughs> Two games to John zero. John <laughs> Larkin wins. And it looks like we're going to get a, a word with John Larkin oh, in awesome. just a minute here. Despite his Yankee shirt, yeah, yeah. we will take a moment well, we'll to chat with him. we'll ask him about that. Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> Where did he find that? He must have got it for cheap at, like, a thrift store <laughs> here in Ireland. Welcome back to the booth, guys. Marshall Seglov here with Brian David Marshall. And uh, really close stuff there. I mean, we saw, you know, it was interesting. In both matches that we just watched, we saw Yvonne Flock forced to do things that you would rather not. Like, okay, I got to block with all these, and if you have anything. And we saw Brad Nelson have to do that, too. He had to throw all of his creatures in front of Hunter Hannawan and just say, well... Look, if you got it, I, I, I can't win the game any, any other way. Right. He almost was able to stabilize off of his read the bones, but ultimately the read the bones did him in because it brought his life total enough sure. so that the draw from uh, Larkin was able to kill him. Yeah, he, he, need, he needed to find a Boron Overlord there at the end. And, he uh, did. It was... It was uh Lurking in some other corner of Hades. Yeah, I really like I really like uh, Brad Nelson's play there, though. You know, he he bit the bullet on all all of those situations where yeah. he's like, "Well, was, I got a block." I was, it was still alive right down to the last draw. Of the and game. he was, he absolutely yeah. was. If he drew any creature, basically there, he could be stable. So I saw you just look at the <laughs> just like oh Yankee. The shirt. disgruntled Mets fan over here is. <laughs> I mean, disgruntled non-Yankee fan, right? Yeah, like, well, that's everybody. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. all everybody else. But uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get a chat here with uh, John Larkin right now down in the feature match with Tim Willoughby. Okay, we're ready down here. And welcome to the feature match area. Here I am with John Larkin. Congratulations, John, rattling off another win here. It's been a while since we last saw you on the Pro Tour. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, since two January 2004, Pro Tour Amsterdam, so nine and a half years since I last played Magic, never mind a Pro Tour. Yeah. And it's, it's going all right. I mean, you've got a few new fans potentially, clearly lots of fans given that you know, you're from Ireland. There's, there's people watching at the venue, there's people watching nearby in a couple of different places. I think you may have lost a fan with the Yankees t-shirt in BDM, yeah. but um, all in all, it's all going pretty well, right? Yeah, going okay. I didn't have to read as many cards this feature match, uh, so that's a bonus. Uh, hopefully less hate uh, on the interwebs, but uh, yeah, no, going fine, yep. And of course, 
I mean, the deck that I really associate you with is, is Trinity Green, the very, very explosive uh, mono green deck from many years ago that just dominated Replenish at Worlds one year. This year, there's all of the Devotion decks. Does it kind of feel like coming home? Um, well, no, in a way, because uh, I really didn't have any chance to practice for this tournament. But uh, in, in a way, yes. I mean, Trinity Green was a great deck, but there were also a lot of other good decks along the ways, like uh, Reanimate was probably my favorite. Uh, extended reanimate. And of course that was one of the ones where you were top 8 at the Pro Tour with, so certainly a special one for you. Yeah, it was a special one, yeah. That and Rebels, two of my, uh, two of my winning decks, but uh, yeah, many there and many to come, hopefully. Hopefully, and hopefully we'll see you plenty more in the feature match area. There's still a good few rounds to go, but yeah. keep up the winning and we'll keep seeing you here. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks a lot, John. Cheers. We'll head back to the uh, the booth right now. Back to the booth. Marshall Cycle here with Brian David Marshall. Could and, not uh, defend the Yankee shirt. He didn't. He, he, you saw, he just sort of let that fall to the wayside. <laughs> but uh, pretty cool to get a look at somebody who's experienced a lot of success in the early stages of Magic the Gathering and has now come back. And, and you know, so even though, like he said, he had to read some of his cards, you see that the skills of understanding mm -hmm. what those cards are and how they interact and, like, his ability to just... Yeah, yes. this super steep learning curve. Yes. Um, be able to uh, catch up and, you know, only lose two matches mm -hmm. at this Pro Tour so far. Yeah, that's right. Really impressive stuff. All right. They are ready. Back at the news desk. Richard Hagen awaits. Let's send it back to him. Thanks very much, Marshall. Thanks to Brian David Marshall as well. Great stuff as usual down in the feature match area. Let me bring you up to speed with some of the big matches. We were looking at pod one and pod three. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. Remember, there is a pod two sort of sandwich between these. But let's take you on the left-hand side, pod one. Lucas Tajak is now down to seven and three. He has lost twice this morning. Sam Black now the top 25. You see he's tied for 25th with even Flock at the moment. We just saw in the feature match area. He's at 9-1 after a loss to Makahita Mahara of Japan, the number 20 ranked Mahara, now at 9-1. Also 9-1 is Jeremy Dizani. He defeated Tajak this round. And John Finkel, you see there, he is down to 7-3, winless this morning from 7-1 overnight. David Kaplan won that one to go to 8-2. Now, on the right-hand side, pod number three, they were all starting out at 6-2. So, now you see Peter Ingram, he is 0-2 this morning. Ola Rada is 0 Oh, and two this morning. He lost to Patrick Chapin this round. That was a great match. Chapin now at seven and three. Poor old Christian Calcano. He's at seven and three, which is a very good record. Two of his losses have been to his friend and teammate, Ben Friedman. They've played in constructed. They've played in limited. It's 2-0 to Friedman right now. And Friedman is eight and two as a result of that. Hao Shan Huang has had a terrific start to the morning, eight and two. And well done, Luke Southworth from England. Uh, he defeated Ingram to advance to seven and three and stay alive for top eight contention. Luis Scott Vargas, though, lost to Hao Shan Huang that round, the number 15 ranked LSV, still in contention at seven and three. So that's where we are on our leaderboard. Plenty of results still to come in as we head towards the back end of this second round of draft. But we're going to go back to the second round of draft kind of, well, actually 24 hours ago because we've got Sam Black with us. And rather than try and dissect his draft this morning, we're going to look at his winning 3-0 blue-white deck from yesterday. Because it's all very well saying, what was your first pick? What did you go next? But how does the actual deck shape up once you're sitting Sitting there with 30 minutes to build a coherent hole. We're going to find out at the video wall. It's time to go inside the deck with Sam Black and Zach Hill. <laughs> 